Welcome to another episode of 72 Pink Connector. With us this week, we have Tom. Yes. And Adam. Hello. How are you guys doing this awesome, awesome Saturday evening? It is no longer hot as fuck. <laughs> That's it has good. been hot as fuck for a little bit, really. Yeah, but but I'm happy. Like I I still remember the hot as fuck moments, and I'm happy that it's not that way anymore. So you see, why did it get that hot? So in that Seattle, was... for two weeks out of the year, it is bloody fucking hot. <laughs> uh, every other time in Seattle, it's fine. It's perfectly mm-hmm. livable. But for two weeks, it gets like as hot as most of the other parts of the country, which is just awful. You don't ever want to live in those parts of the country. Correct. Yeah, and let, let's level set here. He's saying hot. We hit 90. 95 on one day. Yeah. For like a couple hours. This isn't shit <laughs> compared to most of the country. It was, it was so bad. That's it was not, so bad. And it's dry. I mean, that sucks, we, but... There's not a lot of humidity. I mean, it hasn't rained. It rained here once in the last two and a half to three months. Yeah. So it was dry that as rainy shit. Rainy Seattle. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so that said, we we live in a part of the country where people put on heavy winter coats when it hits fifty degrees outside. <laughs> now it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Now I will say, I take the bus into work, and um, I have to wake up at five o'clock. And sometimes I'm just like, man, I want to fucking sleep on the bus. When I hit that mode, I put on a hoodie because fifty five degrees. If you have a hoodie on, you're a little warm, or you sleep better. Yeah, I could see that. I'm okay with that. And then I just throw that in the backpack afterwards, and it's all good. But a hoodie is totally different than, like, a heavy, like, George Costanza-style, big, (laughs) filled-up winter coat. Totally different. So, last winter, when there was snow on the ground, I mean, it's just, like, it just at about freezing. Um, I'm walking in with a little brown jacket with a little bit of, like, fluffy insulation. And that's it. I mean, open, unzipped, just walking like it's no one's business. Yeah, jackets. Totally cool with jackets. Then, I've got a jacket. And then Tom, as he said, everyone else is around with, like, full-on down jackets, scarves wrapped all the way around their head up. Like, we're talking January in Chicago style of weather oh, wear. That's in yeah. the, Oh, man. When yeah. it's 30 degrees. <laughs> and it's because they're just not used to it, but it's still funny to me. Coming from Ohio, where, yeah, okay, we don't get the Windy City shit, but we still get sometimes, you know, below zero for Guys, five I, days. I grew up in Detroit. Like, I remember having to shovel the way, shovel out of my front door so I could go places. Like, fu- oh, Jesus. I just, it pisses me off when I see people <laughs> in, in, like, not even cold weather wearing all this stuff. I'm like, dude. Shorts and shoveling snow is kind of my standard mode of operation. <laughs> That's not normal. I know. But but it's me, and it just makes me mad. <laughs> it is warm enough out here where you could wear shorts all year round if you were that kind of person. Yeah. It's yeah, not this dumbass back in the Midwest where it's actually like cold as fuck and you're wearing shorts. Oh, my God. Dude. Okay. what? Was, not last year, but like two or three years ago, it got down to like negative 20 in Ohio. Yeah, my last two winters mm. in Ohio, we had a week straight of negatives and I had to walk a half mile into work. So oh, my no. car, it got cold enough that my car would not even start. And this this is like a newer car. Like it was a 2010. And this was like three years after I bought it. And... <laughs> It just wouldn't start because it was that cold. It wouldn't actually ignite the fuel. I actually had beard that's sickles terrible. for the first time in my life. Beard sickles are pretty rad. It's pretty yeah. hardcore. Like <laughs> that's a really Viking thing. It is. Yeah, but it wasn't too Viking when you come back to your Monte Carlo that doesn't have a, <laughs> a heater blower. So like you're blowing in your gloves with your own like heat of your <laughs> lungs. <laughs> wow. Why was that so hard for me to articulate? I, I anyway. don't even know. Uh, but because the um, pain is brought back in memory, <laughs> uh, it's just terrible. So we know why you tune into Seventy Two Pin Connector every single week. Let's talk about some food. So, Irk, oh, yeah. did you eat anything weird? Did you eat anything fun? No, everything has been status no. quo. Only thing hold I on, can, only... hold on. We got ramen last night. Yeah, it's ramen. It's not worth talking about. Oh, okay. It was good ramen. It's... We don't need really. it. Like pork stuff in it. Yeah, in but egg. If, if I bring something up on here, it needs to be interesting. I don't want to bore them with like, oh, I was okay, ramen. I want to tell them like, this is awesome or this is terrible. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. So the only thing I'll point out is once again, I made some beef stew from scratch and fuck yes. Yeah. Love it. 
So, so nice. how did you cook this beef stew? Like, was it stovetop? Was it crock pot? Did you use an instant pot? Pressure cooker? Like, oh, I wish I had a pressure cooker. Then I could have got a full on roast. Got to get an instant pot. Well, with pressure cookers, though, you can get like a full roast cooking down in two hours, and yeah. then you throw it into the crock pot. I guess you could do that too. I just use my crock pot for ten hours. Just start it in the morning, get back, eat some roast. Oh, uh, this Some was literally midday decided, and within three hours we were eating. Okay, ah, yeah, nice. All right. So yeah, I've had a crock pot for like three years, and I've yet to use it. Oh, the crock pot is my favorite <laughs> cooking know, utensil. I know it's good, but I just it's amazing. I honestly, especially for you, something like beef stew is just a great entry level because you just chop up some potatoes, chop some cunt onions, carrots, celery, throw it in there. Brown you up some beef and throw it in, and not ground beef. Like, um, honestly, if it's just you, get you a small sirloin and cube it you up. You can you can do poor man shredded chicken. So you take some chicken breast, throw it in, throw in some chicken stock, turn that shit on on like high and wait eight hours. You come home from a hard day at work, take out a piece of chicken and just shred it on a plate. It's delicious. Though I will call this out. Hmm. Um, binging with Babish, he did a Zelda Breath of the Wild episode. Not too long ago, and he did a mushroom um, risotto. Yes, I made that. Oh, yeah. It was so good, we made it again with broccoli and cauliflower. Nice. Nice. There you it go. is really good. I I'll have to try that one. Everyone go to that page. It is really easy. The hardest thing is chopping onions. If you can chop onions, <laughs> you can make this. Yeah. I see. I wish I liked mushrooms. I just, I do not mushroom. Well, okay. The second time That's we didn't fair. use mushrooms, instead use of mushroom. mushrooms, we did broccoli and cauliflower. It's oh, so risotto. you didn't you can add it. whatever you it want just, in it. Holy shit. Yeah. Honestly, take can out I the do mushrooms. a chicken risotto? Yes. Chicken. Holy yeah. shit. You can do, um, you my can mind do, is blown. You could do beef. Uh, you wouldn't want huge cubes. So you'd either want to cut it really small or maybe ground would even work. I think like for a creamy risotto, nah, you definitely ground. want like a chicken. I don't think beef would actually fit that well. Beef would work. If it was ground and not cooked in it. So yes. the, okay. the big thing with the risotto, the way you do this is you're cooking everything together. Where beef, when you cook it, you get all that grease. So, right. so let me, let me ask you this. When you ate the risotto, how many hearts did you get back? Um, well, I got one heart back. Oh, Hey-o. sorry. Ah. Um, but no, it was in, end of story. Go to Babish. It was really fucking good. Binging yeah. with Babish. I, I made that pasta. Uh, I don't know. Oreo, yo, yo, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Pasta. Olio, olio. Yeah, that one. Whatever Italian is for garlic and oil. Um, <laughs> Aioli? I made, I made that again. I think I've made that four times now since I made it the first. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. I had it for dinner last night and then leftovers today for lunch. Oh, nice. That's awesome. So, Tom, there's a reason you brought this up. I did. You want to I talk did. about something. This is this is a first for 72 Food Connector, and I'm really disappointed that this is actually happening on this show. Um, oh. So, I went, I went to this place that shall not be named. It was a pretty hipster joint. I don't want to disparage them publicly on the podcast, because every restaurant has bad days, and maybe it was just yeah. one of those. So... We go to this place. I was looking online. They've got a picture of this, like, crispy, fried-up, spicy chicken sandwich. Like... Wendy's fucking wishes their shit looked this good. Um, and I, I so just wanted that. So I got there. I ordered that. We got some fish and chips. We got what's called a pretzel loaf, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a fucking loaf of bread made out of pretzel bread. I was so excited. It comes with beer cheese and everything was just average. So not so not only was the food average, but um, they totally messed up the order. So I, I ordered a side salad and I got some like a side salad with ranch and I got some weird like fruit salad with a vinaigrette. It was good, but it's not hmm. what I ordered. You ordered a ranch side salad yeah. and they gave you a berry vinaigrette salad. Yes. It wasn't oh. bad. I, I hmm. ate it, but it was definitely not what I ordered. Um, everyone uh, was really nice. Uh, and I ordered the fried spicy chicken sandwich and I got a grilled spicy chicken sandwich. Um, <sighs> hmm. Yeah, there seems to be bad. something different going on there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really like want to give them another chance, but honestly, everything about that restaurant was so just boringly average. I don't even feel like giving them a yeah. second chance. But everything I've yeah. had here has been so delicious, and this is the only restaurant that's been just dull. So yeah, I, I don't think sucks. I'm going to go back. Yeah, I found a it, new restaurant I'd like <clears> to try around here. 
There's oh, another. What is it? There's another Vietnamese restaurant with good oh. ratings on Google. And I know we always go to Lin's, but this other place is technically closer. Should I call and, Lin? Uh, Should I tell him? Tell him no, you're cheating on don't him. Tell him. Okay. Yeah, but I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to because they serve something a, a very Vietnamese dish that for some reason the Lin's doesn't have, and that's banh mi. Uh, it's a sandwich with French bread and stuff in it, and it's a pretty popular Vietnamese dish. And for some reason, Lin's doesn't have it, but this place does. So I, I might. I'm thinking about trying that this week and trying a banh mi sandwich for the first time. Hmm. hmm. That sounds good. That actually uh, does remind me. There was one interesting thing about the ramen night. Is there is this thing I can't remember what it was called, but essentially it is. Oh yeah, these deep fried balls with this creamy dough with octopus in it mm. was really good. <laughs> I, did I was not the only partake. one at the table. Well, two of us tried it. I was the only one at the table that enjoyed it, and I thought it was really fucking good. Yeah, no, nice. I would. Try I had. It. I had green tea. Um, <laughs> yeah, Tom. Tom's. <laughs> Tom's going out in the left field with green tea. Yeah, well, see, I mean, green so, tea. I, I had what a crazy green tea. Like not not like Lipton green tea and honey. Hey, and we're gonna make it slightly yellow. It's green tea. We promise. It just tastes like soda. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it uh, it tasted like socks. Um, according according tasted to my wife, like socks. <laughs> according to my wife, who really loves green tea, um, it was it was good. But uh, to me, all green tea tastes like socks. So that's um, interesting. I love like if tea. I if I took took off my socks after like two days of wearing them and running and I, I don't run and then dip them in some hot water. That's what green tea tastes mm. like to me. It just wow. it's not it's not good. I do not like it. That's that green tea Pocky mm. like the Mokta Pocky. It's delicious because yeah. it's Pocky. Huh. All right, so we're means. we're on to uh, you, wait, hold on, hold, hold the fuck on to make sock tea. So maybe we should talk about some video games. No, at this no, point. Yes, no. Yes, we, we, we digressed. To, we, we, need digressed. To, we need to get into this. Irk has never had pocky. No, I didn't say that. I said I oh, pocky's fine. Oh, you don't know what pocky is? No. Holy shit! Isn't that like short shortbread. Like yeah, they're shortbread good. sticks with chocolate. You can dipped. dip it in it's stuff. Good. They're like coated. They're delicious. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get you some pocky. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Video games. Video games. The no. reason for the season. So what about video games? They're what fun. Are, yeah. They're are they though? Sometimes. Are they sometimes. really not fun? All, not all no. of them are fun. Some of but, them are actually pretty unfun. Anyway, I want to get to some points in news real quick because last week it was just Tom and I. And now we brought yes. one of the two missing members back. And we'd yes. like to ask you, why the fuck weren't you here last week? Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's your sorry. fucking excuse? <laughs> we were playing the Rocket Live League Championship Series Open Qualifiers. Um, yeah, we didn't win. But it was but, fun. But you, you, we did well enough to, you did yeah. well enough to miss the podcast, though. So, you know, that's yeah, a good we thing. Did. Wow. You did yeah. well enough to <laughs> miss the podcast. Yeah. Thank so, God you ducked us. <laughs> we're, we're really good about playing a tournament on a Saturday and getting second rounded. So we always beat the first team, which is just like people who aren't super... Uh, like people that are newer to the game or whatever, but they join tournaments for fun. And we usually beat them in the first round. And then the second round, we always just get destroyed by like pro players <laughs> or just really good players. So um, it was nice to make it further than that. In fact, I think, oh, I don't remember what round it was. We either got to, we lost either the semifinal game or we lost the quarterfinal game. You lost the quarterfinals because had you quarter won, finals. you guys would have went in. To yeah. The fi- yeah. Okay. So we got to the corner quarterfinals and lost, and then uh, dropped down to the lower bracket. Got to the quarterfinals of that again and lost. So we actually got to play a lot of games, which was a lot of fun. It was good. That's awesome. And you were you were repping our our new seventy two pin connector <laughs> sub team. Yes. The uh, we're the baby team. There's there's another team that are they take it more seriously than we do. We we haven't played a tournament in months. Um. But these guys play regularly. I think they play tournaments pretty much every weekend. They're practicing all the time. Damn. Uh, but um, so they're the seventy-two pin connector team, and we were the thirty-two pin connector team. The um, B squad. <laughs> yes. And for for those of you who don't know, the seventy-two pin connector is actually a component of the NES, and the thirty-two pin connector came from the original Game Boy. And for those who yes. actually matter, 72 PC is our ultra competitive team and 32 PC is our still competitive other team. 
Yeah, so I, I only play on the 72-pin connector Dota team, clearly. <laughs> I haven't found anyone nice. willing to challenge me, so... Uh, or play with you. Well, that too. <laughs> I'd challenge you if I doted, but I don't dota, okay. and that one but, instructional but night we, was enough dota for me. I was gonna say, we did do <laughs> a dota night, which wasn't on yeah, Twitch. I you didn't can... play dota. No, you watched dota. I you watched asked questions you about dota. dota. Yeah, we we have video I, evidence yeah. up on youtube.com yeah. oh, yeah. slash seven two pin connector. <laughs> Shameless That's, plug. Check that out our is YouTube a professional content. plug. Um, um, where where you can find our Dota video. Yeah. So, but yeah. all in all, you guys did do well. I watched. I happened to tune in. The first game I was able to watch was when you got knocked out of the winners. But mm. I was able to watch up until it got conflicting with the podcast. Then. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was a. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And um. Actually, that was all the video games I played this week. Believe it or oh, not. Wow. I'm well, terrible. You, I'm terrible. So for those who don't know, Adam's job involves him driving a lot. Yeah, sometimes. At I've least 72 hours from, a day. I've been driving back and forth from Kentucky every day. So he's, he's been having a so, haul. So yeah, So do you, do you listen to any been, awesome uh, video game podcasts on your way to Kentucky every day? Uh, not recently. Um, I do occasionally listen to the Giant Beast cast, which I know Damn Eric listens right. to. Sweet. Um, that's really the only video gaming podcast I've checked out. Um, I need to okay. really check out some other ones. Those since guys do, are since super we do this fun. and everything, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give a, a very public plug to Orange Lounge Radio. They're the longest Orange running video game podcast. Oh, tell me about that. Yeah, they've I been running this. for over ten years, and I've been listening since they started podcasting. Yes, but the Giant nice. Beast cast is number one podcast in the world. Giant Beast Cast is pretty According good. According to um, the, them. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes. So that makes sense. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, the podcast I've been listening to the most is called the Ultimate Recording Machine Podcast. It's a uh, uh, audio recording, mixing stuff podcast with uh, the interview producers all the time. Really good stuff if you like that kind of thing. Nice. Uh, obviously, that's a very small niche of people, none of which probably listen to us, but that's a good podcast <laughs> i don't know um we did do a creative stream today and actually um i talked to tom a little bit about this i think we are going to try to do a playlist on our youtube channel of how it's made essentially where yeah. oh, we yeah. have one video breaking down exactly how it is we do every step of what it takes to make a podcast so this will be really interesting especially to me because um the one thing I've wanted from the podcast that I listen to is a, okay, how the fuck are you doing this? How are you putting this stuff together? How are you editing? How are you making these transitions? Um, mm -hmm. all, all this stuff. Basically, how you build podcasting from the ground up. And there's been bits and pieces of that happening in podcasts that I've seen, but no one who's done a really good in-depth deep dive. Um, so yeah. that's, that's something we're going to be putting together. Everything from... You know, the front end website to RSS feeds to how to get yourself on pocket casts and whatever um, mm -hmm. to how editing. to edit the audio and make it sound yep. good. How to mash up the video, how to actually transform your fucking desk into an entire <laughs> setup where you can actually have a table thingy and shit. The, yeah. the shit you have to buy to make a podcast sound decent. And, and yeah. I'm, I'm going to um, go with decent because you don't have to you don't have to start yeah. out with an interface. You can. You can use pretty shitty USB mics like I do. But the interface mics are really nice. They help. They, they I'm are. looking forward. I'm really looking forward to the YouTube comments on those. I agree. Yes. Like, it'll be interesting. Like, oh, you, sure. guys hey, follow, so, you guys are stupid. Why do you do it that way? That's stupid. You should be doing it this way. And then we'll be like, oh, cool. Yeah, Thanks, they'll be guys. Like, hey, and then we take down our video and release a new video showing us doing this new way we've done the entire time. Yeah, totally. Yes. We've always done it this <laughs> way, guys. Ah, oh, shit. But, but yeah, well, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good. So that was really all you did this week then, wasn't it, Adam? That's, yeah, that's it. I, I played like one round of Battlegrounds before we podcast tonight. But that's that's all the video games I've played. I didn't play any more Dark Souls. I didn't play Rocket League through the week. I didn't uh, I didn't play Darkwood, which was a game I played a couple of uh, weeks ago. But they just released recently. It's final and release now. Their uh, creative director, or some, one of the big ups for them just uh maybe the head dev or whatever because i know it's an indie but they just yeah. did an ama on reddit actually yep, they did hmm. it's interesting there's actually only like three or four people involved in that game at all so wow. i think all of them actually commented on that that thread 
But uh, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start playing that again now that it's released, and I don't have to worry about losing save data. I'll actually check it out for real instead of just kind of getting in and walking around and looking around. Uh, huh. But yeah, check out that AMA. That's cool. But other than that, I haven't played anything at all. But you guys have, and I want to hear about it. We have. So um, there's a new game that came out that I had um, Vosbeck come up and tell me, like, hey, this is pretty good. Then I had, I think I was going to start, but then I had another buddy, James, back in Ohio. I was like, hey, this this is actually really good. And then uh, d came and it's like, hey, man, this is this is pretty good. And I'm like, is it rage inducing? He's like, yeah, it's just like it is on the Sega. <laughs> and then Tom has purchased this game. And of course, I am talking about Sonic Mania. So uh, that that's going to be a teaser because I, I'm actually going to uh, respond to two YouTube comments we got. Um, with, uh, they were requests for us to do this on the podcast. Uh, uh-huh. so I'm going to say to both of you, we will not be following your Instagram. Go fuck yourself. Uh, now that that's oh. over. Yeah. Uh, um, now that that's we don't over. don't even have an Instagram. Uh, yeah, I know. Apparently they don't we know that. One. No. Just but. post pictures of selfies of me. Or were they trying to get us to follow their Instagram? That yeah, is it. that one. It was, oh. it was spam bots. It was spam bots. Bots all over Fun. YouTube. Yeah. Anyway, Sonic Sp- Mania. So, Sonic Mania, and this is going to sound like a really backhanded compliment. Sonic Mania is honestly the best Sonic ROM hack I have ever. <laughs> it, it sounds like a really shitty thing. Like, oh, wait, I'm just buying a ROM hack. And you are, but it's a ROM hack in a beautiful engine running at 60 FPS with some really awful bugs. Um, but I'll, I'll get into those later. Um, the, I want to say about, 75% of the game is remixed old stages. Like you jump into Green Hill Zone. And there are other stages that I'm not going to mention because they're kind of, I guess, slightly spoilery, but the best stages um of you know Sonic 1 through Sonic and Knuckles and the best uh you know little gameplay items and objects and uh, obstacles, all of this are mashed up to make the very best remix stages in a Sonic game. I have one thing I have to say. It's a remix, mm-hmm. and one of the remixes pissed me off. Oh, so one of the levels that Tom and I played, um, it's a, my favorite level. Has my favorite music of any Sonic level. Tom or Adam knows what I'm talking about. Um, there is yes. a part where it throws you into an area, closes the door behind you, and you have to work your way to the top while water fills up. And uh, it's a super tense, tense moment. Oh, I already like, feel fuck, anxious. Like, gotta jump, gotta jump, gotta jump. Yep. <laughs> they took the water out of that. They they didn't. They didn't. They did on ours. No, there, yeah. there was well, the section you were in. So these levels are fucking massive. They are so much bigger than you would get on the Genesis. Um, mm-hmm. The section you were in did not have water. But there is a section that does have water, and I know because I drowned there well, three times. Well, I'm just saying that that section is my most memorable spot because you get thrown into it, mm-hmm. and then you have to the things move, yep. and you have to jump up while you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. That that section does happen. It happens a couple different times in in that thing. Okay, okay. So these levels are big. It's not like Sonic Two where they're basically straightaways with slight variations, uh, with the exception of a couple different zones. Uh, these are giant levels i would say rival the complexity of sonic cd they're they're fucking Hmm. big um and there is original content to this game and the original content is honestly some of the best sonic i have ever played uh even compared to the genesis versions even uh you know comparing it to nostalgia bound tom because sonic was my jam back in the day i was a sonic kid yeah I was also a Sonic kid. I Ditto. played Sonic more than any Mario game I've ever. I yes, agreed. Did. Yes, Adam. Agreed. I'm a man. I'm the same way. I was more of a Sonic guy than a Mario guy. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Uh, the original content here is, even when stacked up against my, you know, wearing my nostalgia glasses and looking at my Genesis collection, is some of the best Sonic I've ever played. Um, my nice. only beef with the game, and, and other, other reviews, and especially um, people on YouTube have been saying... That's my only knock against the game is I wish more of this were was original content because it's so goddamn good. Uh, the remix stuff is really good too. It's just the the new stuff takes it to a totally different level. Um, it the the songs are all remixed. Uh, every act, every basically stage, not zone, but every stage within the zone has its mm-hmm. own music. 
uh, and its own remix of a classic Sonic track or a brand new Sonic track, and they all sound great. I'm totally looking forward to this OST when it hits. It might already be nice. out. Um, but there are bugs. There are weird, random bugs. bugs. Um, hmm. There was a bug where I beat a boss and then instantly died. Um, there are oh. bugs with collision in some places. It's not, it's not horrible, uh, but it is, it's enough to make you go, oh, well, fuck. Now I have to redo that. I, the, the acts aren't so long that it's gonna, you know, take an hour off your time, but I've died before and I've wasted, I've lost 10 minutes because something oh. pushed me into the geometry and then I instantly died. Um, hmm. which I guess is better than the alternative because in, in the original Genesis games, I was pushed into geometry and then I was stuck. I had to reset the game. Yeah. Mm. Um, so there, the, it could be worse. Um, but I am looking forward to that getting fixed. Another big issue, and I'm going to blame Nintendo for this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to hand Irk this, uh, this Nintendo Switch here. Go ahead and get to this, uh, that home menu for me. Let's see, got the Genesis in hand. It's a pulse screen from Mario. Home screen. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. I spammed it a lot and it got there for a second. Um, <laughs> but now I, I, I'm not now. Go, go ahead and try to throw that into sleep mode. Go ahead and, and hit the button there. There, I got home. It's, go, it's, go ahead and, go ahead and sleep mode that system. Oh my God. The, what the fuck? Get the, come on. Oh, there, there it good. is. Got it. <laughs> sleep mode. Bam. Done. Okay. So <clears> that was hard. <throat> this you? is a huge fucking problem with this game. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to blame Nintendo about that, but I'll get into the technical reasons here in a bit. Uh, with Sonic Mania, when you hit the, the home button, and this gets worse the more you play the game, um, I'm guessing there's a memory leak or something, because you'll hit home, and it will take three to six seconds to actually bring up the home. When you hit the power button on the top, it'll take three to six seconds. I've, I've waited 15 seconds before for the system to actually go to sleep. In Breath of the Wild, in ARMS, in Mario Kart, uh, in Splatoon, mm. you hit it, and it is fucking instant. Just totally, totally instant. It either brings up the home menu or goes to sleep right away. Sonic Mania breaks that functionality. Now, I'm blaming mm. Nintendo because the fact that a piece of software, a game, can fuck with your OS enough to make that a thing is a huge problem. The home menu should have full priority over everything that a developer mm -hmm. could possibly do in a game. Um, I'm sure this will be fixed. Uh, it is a well-known bug. The internet has been complaining about it, but... Jesus Christ, the fact that you can you can fuck with the home menu uh, in game is kind of an indictment of Nintendo's OS. Yes, Maybe. but if you are having a game that is known to have memory issues, you can everyone knows memory issues break things everywhere in unexpected ways. They do. They do. I mean, some of the really cool credit hacks and speed run shit is about overloading a memory buffer. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I totally get, like, technical reasons of how this should happen, uh, or how it does happen. Mm -hmm. the, the question remains, how the fuck do you build this in such a way to allow that to happen today? On a modern system, this should never be the case. I don't know of any game on uh, the Xbox, starting with the 360 and starting with the PS3 and going forward on those two platforms, where button functionality was... Wait 10 years. People will find ways. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I'm not I mean, saying I mean, we're looking back at the NES era now and seeing all these exploits in SNES eras. But, I, mean, I mean, also, also but that's, that's okay, right? Because the majority of people are playing the Super Nintendo today, right? I totally, I totally get it. But in this, this game was launched like this. They knew this was a bug. This was a known shippable. Um, I don't know how Nintendo even allowed this through QA with it in this state. Now, it, it doesn't destroy the game, right? It's a great game. I'm playing a fuck ton of it. But when stepping off the bus, right, I just got to beat this one boss and then I'm going to hit the the power button and throw up my bag and be done until I get back mm -hmm. on the bus. And then I hit the power button and it doesn't go off. And now I'm carrying, you know, my backpack and my Nintendo Switch and juggling shit off the bus because I don't know if it's actually going to go to sleep. And I don't want to yeah. walk through the city with my Switch powered on in my bag, heating everything up. It's just, it's annoying. It'll be fixed, but the game should not have been shipped in this state. It happens, though. It, it <clears> sucks. But overall, overall you're having it's, a great time with it. It's a fantastic game. I would say if you even remotely like the Genesis era of Sonic games, buy it. This is a game I have waited for for 19 years. There's I'm absolutely going to buy this. 
There's you have to. Also, another release actually on the Switch I want to call out because I'm kind of excited about. <coughs> I know uh, Coffee Tom over there has been hating on it. Oh, but God. The Namco Collection has a few games that I have held dear to my heart, and I'm very glad to see this on the Switch because there's a lot of them that would play really well handheld. They finally now have Pac-Man, Dig Dug. Um, there was, um, damn, I can't remember the other one, but Sky Kid. Sky Kid is this little airplane game. You, pl- you fly a plane around, you shoot other fuckers out of the air, you drop bombs on trucks and stuff on the ground, and then you land and make these little cheerleader ladies turn into dogs if you shoot them. It's hmm. really fucking weird. <laughs> but I had to do a shout out for that because, God damn it, that is a really fun collection. So I, I looked at this because I, when I was buying Sonic Mania on the Switch's store, which, by the way, um, Nintendo needs some props for how much better this is than the Wii or the Wii U. Um, cause on the Wii, you would buy things on the eShop and it would just drag and take forever to download. With Sonic Mania, I hit buy and it's like, oh yeah, I'll pull that for you. And I was playing Sonic five minutes later. The one thing they need to nice. do with their eStore is they have three options. You either know exactly what you're call or what exactly the name is that you're looking for. It's either a new release or it's a popular release. There is no... Uh, I can't remember if they added a browse all. I don't think they did, and I, I don't think there's a genre browser either. So if you're looking for like specifically oh. platformers or horror games or puzzle games, I don't think you can pull those. The eShop mm. definitely needs some work. Um, that said, I mean, it's it's so much better, right? Nintendo, they've they've reached like 2004 in their, in their online <laughs> system. I'm so happy with them. I'm proud. They just need to get through the awkward so Skype phase, and and they'll be there. <laughs> be great. You just need to delete that MySpace page and get on over to I, Facebook. I am going to call out the mm-hmm. Namco collection though, because I I was about to buy that too. I was like, oh shit, look, all these fucking classic games. I'm totally going to drop ten bucks on this. It's a thirty dollar game to play fucking Pac Man. Oh. Yeah, fuck that. Thirty bucks. Ugh. Thirty bucks. That's kind of pricey. They That's... they do do some nice things. There's some bonus content, but it's thirty dollars for fucking Pac Man. I'm I'm yes. not paying thirty dollars for that. That's the only reason you're buying it. Yes. That's the, so Dig Dug. Okay, it's it's Dig Dug, but I I'm not gonna pay thirty dollars for Dig Dug. I but it's not to me. It's Dig Dug. It's uh, Pac Man. It's Sky Kid, and I can't remember what that fourth one was. But yes, I mean it's just it's a solid collection. It's a little pricey, yes, but for the Switch on the go, that's really nice. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I think a lot of this is Switch tax. Oh, everything. Now, a now Switch that's tax. it. That's it. Sonic Mania well, is yeah. twenty bucks, which I think is kind of kind of underpriced, to be honest. Like really. Hmm. I, I would pay 30 for that game. I was expecting to pay 30 for that game. I wouldn't pay 50 or 60, but 20, I think, is more than reasonable for that game with this amount of fun that I'm having with it. Uh, I just got to one of the new zones with the brand new content, and my mind is fucking blown. Like, it's not like they, they did the Shovel Knight thing where they said, hey, we're going to target the Genesis and make only a Genesis game. Like, it's a, it's a modern mm-hmm. Sonic game. And they did things that you could only dream about during the Genesis era. It's really fucking yeah. cool. Uh, I also hear yeah, the final I'm boss is amazing. Playing. I haven't gotten there yet, though. Ooh. No, uh, the, it, is uh, it a new Robotnik? I, I don't know. I've, I have no idea. All I, heard, all I heard was it's really good. Nice. So, yeah, that's, I'm going to buy this. You, I'm sad it's not available until August 29th on Steam. Oh, really? It's delayed on Steam? Yeah. Oh, that's yep. shitty. That is shitty. Yep. But um, I can pre-purchase for ten percent off at seventeen ninety nine, yeah, which I might do. I don't know. It's good. It's really good. I mean, you've got reviews to go on. You've got YouTube stuff. Yeah. So I guess you could, as long as yeah. Um. Well, other than that, I played some retro games. Donkey Kong Country was good. Played some original Genesis Sonic, which was good, just for comparison's sake. Um. And I played some CS:GO, which is always a good time. I suck, but it was fun. We yeah, all suck. You don't have to be good yeah. to enjoy. And and that's that's really all I had this week. That's really? it. Really? That's that's it. I played a shit ton that's of it. Sonic. You didn't have any no. games that made you quit? Oh my god. Okay. All right. I wasn't even going to bring it up until you reminded me. I actually totally forgot about this because it was it was a horrible point in my life where I sold my gaming <laughs> PC 
I, I went out and I bought a PS4 from GameStop with GameStop exclusive content. I pre-ordered all the AAA games. Um, I pre-ordered an EA game and a Ubisoft game. Um, nice. Yeah, I bought an overpriced controller that really didn't have any features. Tra- I, really going down the, the list, huh? Yeah, I, I paid for online servers that go down every 20 minutes. Like, it was great. I really... <laughs> <laughs> oh, and 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 all of my games um, that run in 4K on the PC are now running in 720p upscaled to 1080 on my TV. But Gorgeous. there's still frame rate drops of, you know, it gets down to 15 frames in some places. But I'm a console gamer now, so... Man, you can, that's a good thing. See, you can tell that you have no clue what's anyway. going on on consoles anymore. <laughs> so, so, anyway, um, Josh and I tried to do a dark souls 3 co-op stream um, oh here it is and uh yeah yeah um someone refuses to set up his rig the way it probably should and tries to use in-home streaming and all right so bit. so i use in-home <laughs> streaming for everything so i've got a desk with a computer uh i've got my main gaming rig the thing that powers the vive is in the vive room which is the living room which is five feet away 20 feet away I've seen where your tower is. It's like five feet away. It's like 20 feet. It's like, okay, we'll split the difference. It's like 10 feet away. It's from here to the fucking corner. Yeah, that's like 10 feet. You've, you've got to get your eyes checked. That's like 10 feet. Okay, either way. Either way. Either way. It either is way. not, it is far enough away that I don't want to buy two or three USB extension cables. Um, so I do in-home streaming and for everything it has worked perfectly. I've got a gigabit network. Everything is wired together. I'm not using wireless. It works perfectly until valve fucks their platform um so josh and i are ready we've got the pre-roll up we are ready and i'm like shit my controller's not recognized Eh, this is fucking dark souls it happens sometimes so let's just go ahead and restart dark souls so i keep restarting and i keep restarting and then i decide to modify some in-home streaming settings maybe that fucked it until i do some research and i find uh there's actually a bug with steam's in-home streaming where they have stopped emulating X input devices, uh, which basically means all controllers, all modern controllers at the very least. Mm. Um, so I now cannot use controllers with in-home streaming. So I rage quit. We, we did not do that stream. Uh, instead, I played some, some serious Sam and I hit things with a sledgehammer uh, using a mouse <laughs> and keyboard over in-home streaming, which still worked. <laughs> But it fucking pisses me off. I wasn't on beta. I even I flipped everything to the stable channel, tried it. It broke. It was broken there, too. Flipped it back to beta to force an update. It was broken there as well. There's a forum post with logs. Uh, Theoretically, I checked this uh, a couple hours ago. Theoretically, it is fixed in the latest beta. I will try it when I get home. But Valve ruined the Dark Souls 3 co-op stream for that day. Damn you, Valve. It's like, all your uh, fault. Uh, I put so much money through Steam <laughs> as a platform. I just wish their stable <laughs> channel was fucking stable, because that's the one I'm on. I don't run beta True. channel. I run fucking stable, because I want to play video games. I don't want to dick around with stuff. You want to play video games? I, I just want to play, touch I I just touch play it. video yeah. games. <laughs> so, so I decided to quit my job. I'm now working at GameStop, and I've got all the GameStop exclusives. I make sure all of my box art has, like, not a sticker on it, but actually embedded in the logo of the game art, the GameStop exclusive sticker for pre-orders. Nice. It's, it's wonderful. It's gorgeous. So, yeah. just I can't even Jesus remember the Christ. last time I walked into a GameStop. Um, I do. I do. I needed to buy a Steam gift card. Uh, for <laughs> your birthday, actually, and it was the closest oh, place. So, so I nice. bought you your Steam gift card at GameStop, and I still felt dirty. Wow. Um, <laughs> getting a Pro controller for the Switch. It was the last time I was in. Oh no, I take that back. Oh, I looked. Yeah. I looked at GameStop for a Switch to see if they had any. Oh, uh, they they yeah. didn't. I got Bomberman R. Fuck me. And a uh, Pro controller. Um, I've played Bomberman R exactly twice. Once at your place, and once to see if the game cartridge actually worked when I got it. They had a huge update that's supposed to fix a lot of stuff, but to me, Bomberman is a multiplayer game. I don't play every single player. I agree. Mm. Definitely. Yes. So yeah, that was that was my rage quit moment of the week. Hopefully this week you'll see a Dark Souls 3 co-op stream on Thursday, but it might not. I don't know. Irk, Maybe. what have you been playing? What have you been raging on? Have you been raging on anything? Well, unlike you and Josh, I've, my, the series I've been rolling um, kind of went pretty well. 
Oh, okay. Um, so oh, yeah. on Tell Tuesday, uh, some of the people who are watching now probably watched as well. I started doing a um, Kerbal stream. And I realized I forgot a lot about Kerbal. <laughs> In fact, my very first launch, I accidentally had my parachute open during. <laughs> so about five seconds after takeoff, I realized my nose is pointing at the ground. <laughs> but Whoops. um yeah. I saw that. I caught that. That was good. Total whoops moment. Totally um, caught that. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> Kerbal's great. Great game. Um, had a lot of fun on the stream with it. I finally got some shit out into orbit. Uh, hope, I mean, this Tuesday I can get some stuff out into the actual moon orb, like actual moon rotation orbit, and then actually mm -hmm. onto the moon orbit. So nice. hopefully, and then a couple weeks land, and then, dear God, I got to figure out staging to be able to land and get back. Can no, we no clue? Can we request an addition to the Kerbal stream? So with our Dark Soul stream, we've got a death counter. Can you like make your a death counter for all the Kerbals you've killed, or is, or is that going to overflow your integer there? I still have Jebediah, damn it! You Jebediah? still have Jebediah? Well, because they okay. give you a rollback option. Uh -huh. So um, oh. I still have Jebediah, damn it! Okay, Jebediah is a hardcore motherfucker. You can't lose Jebediah. <laughs> As Prototrix told me, you can't lose Jebediah. He's, he's a badass. He's the guy. He's the guy. He's a <laughs> hardcore badass astronaut. If you lose Jebediah, you lose your space program. But for Ooh. all those who don't know what Kerbal is, it is a space shuttle launching simulator, to put it best. Like, your entire goal is you're making space shuttles and you're launching them into space. And um, it's not like uh, a space exploration simulator or anything. No, it's actually like trajectories and orbits, and that's what it's about. So how much math did you do when you were playing Kerbal? None. Wow. No. Cool. Um, so the game's designed in a way you don't want to do math, you don't have to. You just need to know a few basics of when, you, when you're rotating at a circle, if you um, are to accelerate in a tangent to the circle you're on, it expands the backside of your circle and it'll actually increase your orbit to the mm. point where eventually you're going to stop going at the orbit. And by uh, accelerating on the tangent, what I mean is if you're in a turn, if you was to stop turning and just go straight at any instant, that is the tangent. Hmm. So you just accelerate in that way and it expands your orbit because you're pushing the curve. Next time on Urk Explains Geometry... I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure people understood, because I realized after I said it, that's kind of an awkward term if you don't know what I'm talking we about. We totally need an Irk Geometry cast now. We need Irk's, Irk does geometry stream. No, we don't. Twitch does geometry. I'm not going to do proofs on a stream. <laughs> yes. I'll let RS do proofs for us. I'm not doing proofs on a stream. <laughs> um, this is awesome. But yeah, so I did some curb. We're going to do it some more on Tuesday. It's the first, that was the first of the series. Tuesday will be the second. Um, come join us Tuesday, 10 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be fun. But um, also started another series that I think one of you guys are going to do next week, but I did the inaugural one. I refuse. Well, fuck <laughs> you too. No, I, no, I'll probably do it. I actually have a couple of games already installed. Like Dota. <laughs> But no, I uninstalled <laughs> that actually. <laughs> oh god! I took that shit off of there. So, oh <laughs> fuck! I think we found a game we have to play. I, I've seen this game before. Yeah. Uh, so AOL <laughs> Instant Messenger, aka Delias, is requesting oh. me do Daddy uh, Dream Daddy Dating Simulator <laughs> as our next game for this series. <laughs> it won't happen next. It might happen eventually. But um, so the next series that I started on Wednesday was the Lost and Found, where we take games we've never played and play them. Uh, this week I did Pixel Junk Eden, and man, that is an odd platformer. Um, so you're jumping around, grabbing onto these plants, running into things. So when you kill them, they help grow more plants, so you can get to a certain point in the map. It's really, really weird. I don't know how to really explain it, but it's it's odd. It was slow. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for those of you who watched on Wednesday, because that might have been a slightly boring stream. I promise we'll have better ones, more exciting games. <laughs> it wasn't a bad game, though. If you like chill mm -hmm. platformers, 
there wasn't a whole lot of death. You had so much time and you can collect some things to get more time, but it wasn't like mm-hmm. um, you have 60 seconds go. You feel like you have plenty of time, and if you don't make it to the point, your progress sticks and you just get back into the round. Hmm. So it's not that bad. Not um, that bad, but it's not you wouldn't that recommend bad. it. Um, if you pick it up for a buck or two, it's an okay platformer. Um, really good music. It was kind of techno y. It, it's got a good little drive to it. I enjoyed it. Um, it's got a cool to- visual style. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, if you want to kind of check it out, um, on our YouTube channel tomorrow, we will have that video uploaded so everyone can check it out if they want. Um, but outside of those two, I wasn't doing a whole lot this week. Um, did TF2 at the end of last week, all of us all go ahead and throw it out there. Last week's community game was TF2. It was a great time. Yeah, that was way more fun than I thought it would be. It was be. the first time I played TF2 in over a year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, had a whole lot of fun. DLAS showed us that we were all correct that he is a fucking god at TF2. So the <laughs> only thing we learned during last week's community stream is to never play TF2 with DLAS. Unless you're on his team. Then, then it's a good time. Yeah, fucker's good. Hmm. But um, this week, in case you want to download it right now, because we'll be back on in about 30 minutes on it, is Left 4 Dead 2. Two. Um, Not one. Two. Two. Be a zombie, two, kill some humans. One. Be a human, kill some zombies. Your choice, whatever. Just come play with us. Do it. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know if I've ever played Left 4 Dead 2. I'm pretty sure I played the first one. Get zombie. The multiplayer on those is so fun. It really is. Yeah, I, I've heard it is, and I haven't really done much of it, so I'm kind of looking forward to playing this tonight. I actually know the exact moment when I stopped playing Left 4 Dead 2. Um, so I used to play this a shit ton, and I would have a good time, and... I, I was like, okay, guys, come on, we gotta stick together, and everyone check your corners, and, like, I thought it was hot shit, and then I played with my brother, who's like, alright, alright, let's, let's play Left 4 Dead, and go, and he would play it like a fucking speedrunner, like, just running through, melee only, jumping through shit, like, fucking with level geometry to get through as fast as he could, and I was, I was with, like, two of his buddies, and they were all doing this, and I was like, what, how the fuck are you guys doing this, and he's like, dude, either have to learn the game or you can't play with us and i was like oh <laughs> shit okay <laughs> well and the reason you have to do that wah, is when you're playing wah. by yourself it doesn't seem too important yeah but multiplayer there is four human controlled zombies that are of special status oh, no no we were, we were playing mm-hmm. career mode with four humans against the pc but they had it on like oh. super nightmare difficulty or whatever oh god and they were just <laughs> speedrunning the whole goddamn thing and they were wrecking shit like, it was mm-hmm. nuts, and I realized that I just can't compete to that level. So, uh, tonight, you'll see me die a whole lot. <laughs> so, like we do on every shooter. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but other things I've been doing, a little bit of Rocket League as Norm. Um, so, last night, so, I'll rewind. About, what would it be, five weeks ago, our very first postcast community game was Jackbox Party Pack. Mm-hmm. Jackbox Party Pack. Since then, this game has actually kind of been a mainstay for me. So, nice. um, Tom and his wife will come over, and Gina and I and those two will go out, we'll get something to eat, we'll come back, and we'll play Jackbox Party Pack for a few hours, drink some beer, and just have a good time. I have a problem with this game. What's that? <laughs> All right. There are public algorithms to make fair random dice tom which, sucks is his problem which means so so random does not have an even distribution and i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna lay it out in layman's terms when you roll a mm-hmm. dice it doesn't mean you're gonna get one 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 two one three one four you know just get one of everything across the board it means you're gonna get like maybe sometimes when you choose the faker you'll get picked as the faker six to twelve times in a row during a single a single play session of Jackbox Party Pack, of faking it. And that's not really fun for that one person who gets picked literally four <laughs> times in a row during the night, and everyone's like, oh, it's Tom again. Because I've only got so much lying juice in me. So like, what, I can only lie so much. <laughs> so what Tom much. doesn't explain is, okay, so let me lay out the game mode. It's called faking it. So there's like six or seven different things, game modes in it. There's raise your hand if you've done it or not. Raise the amount of fingers at the time you've done this and or point to the person who is most likely to do this. And it will text your phone a question and you have to answer according to whatever game mode it is. The faker won't get the question and they'll just be told, fake it. 
What Tom is leaving out of this is the fact that as soon as he would answer, he instantly goes on the defense and starts saying why this person and that person's wrong, ignoring the fact that he went hyper defensive every time he was the faker. So I, I honestly <laughs> literally got picked at least four times in a row. I was the faker that night. Like we played mm. probably what, 12 rounds and I was the faker eight of those rounds, four of nice. them in a row. There you are gotta change algor- up your strats. But there- see, at, at that point, it helps you because, oh, there's no way he's going to be the sixth time. There's no way he's going to be the seventh <laughs> time. That's just an indictment like, on you. Like, there, there are algorithms for... It, it just it doesn't make the game fun for that one person who keeps getting fucked, <laughs> is, is my only point. There are algorithms for fake dice rolls. So if you were... Um, you know, if, let's say you've got a four-sided die, um, which I, I know that's not really a physical possibility. You kind of have to do eight sides and then double up the numbers on each side, whatever. Let's say you've got a four-sided die, and you roll a... Instead of that one being 25% likely to fall, have your algorithm lower it to 13.5% likely, bump up the others by an even ratio. And that way, it's less likely to hit a one on the next roll, and the others are more likely. And then if something hasn't been hit for a while, it's pretty likely it's going to hit that way. It doesn't Mm -hmm. work in games of chance. It doesn't work in casino games or anything that needs true random values. But... When you're doing something like picking a role for a person in a game, fair random is better than true random. Okay, I only have I one issue. That. I only have one issue with what you said there. Okay. Think of a pyramid. Yes. How many sides <laughs> is on a pyramid? No, I'm saying so there are four sided <laughs> die in D D, and it's actually eight sides. No, it's a pyramid. You're thinking an eight sided dice. There is a four sided dice. It's a pyramid. Okay, yes, there is a pyramid. Yeah, I was D4. thinking an eight-sided, and then you do one the top and bottom. No, you you're know. fucking dice nerd. Yeah. Okay, Jesus. All right, got Come it. On. Damn it. But no, it, oh, actually, it's wrecked. <laughs> but in general, <laughs> Jackbox, it's it's a really good mainstay. Um, I really next time I'm in Ohio, I plan on bringing this up and playing it on the Switch with everyone because it is just a really good time. And as I long as you have TKO. a smartphone or a computer, you can play it, and it's a great fucking time. So a yes. a winner. So TKO is where you design T-shirts, and I, I just have to throw this out there. Oh, God. One of the T-shirts that keeps getting designed over and over again and keeps winning over <laughs> and over again is the seventy two pin connector logo, and the the slogan is "Get fucked." And every time that gets played, it goes all the way to the end, and it wins. It's kind of an internal meme. It's kind of internal meta. <laughs> eh. Well, it's kind of like I want to get into what happened on the community stream, but we had some metas go on there too. But a uh, little bit of, well, I don't even want to say news. There's one other game I want to talk about a little bit. Have you guys looked much more into Aztez after we talked about it? I have not. So I saw a little, not much. I want to throw a little love out. Um, One of our buddies, Dark Soul Invader, he has a Twitch channel. He streams on a regular basis. You should go check him out. He was streaming Aztez. And I was watching the other night. This is a really cool hybrid game. It's a little bit roguelite because it's random every time and it's session or run based. Um, it's beat them up because every stage you go into, you have like three minutes, to kill all the enemies and beat them up fashion. Straight 2D, no uh, hybrid 3D where you have a depth. It is straight 2D. Mm-hmm. And then it's a little bit sieve where you get resources on an overarching world board and you have to actually say where you're invading to attack and stuff hmm. it is a really, really cool really interesting game while the general combat might get boring to you there is a strategy on the meta or on the outer layer that is also really cool so um i just saw that for the first time in actual gameplay for a prolonged period so i wanted to call it out and just say if you have any any interest at all in a game like Castle Crashers or even old school, you know, Streets of Rage and Battletoads and stuff, but thought, ah, it's a, it's a little too repetitive. Look into Aztez. This gives you some freshness on that. And it's really, really, really fucking cool. Yeah. It's got a cool style to it, too. It, look, it looks cool. Yes. Aesthetically, the game looks fucking great. It's <laughs> black and white stick figures with some really cool art thrown in. But that's all I have is a little PSA. Go check out Aztez. It's actually really cool. A um, little bit of news for you. Uh, we can run through this pretty quick. Uh, StarCraft Remastered is finally launched. Um, it's 15 bucks, and it supports 4K. 
So I'll, hold hold the phone. Hold the phone. The first the first big piece of news here is Blizzard released a new game. So that's that's big news. Blizzard released a new game for fifteen dollars. That is the biggest news of the year. A uh, new Whoa, old game. Holy though. shit! Come and on. then this is where Tom has to take his rose glasses off and realize this is a twenty year old game. Yeah. The most perfect <laughs> RTS ever created. A twenty year no, old it is game. Not. Yes, it is. It still, uh, has, it still has fallacies in it because they didn't redo any of the game that they fixed in StarCraft Two. Why in the fuck can I only move 12 units on a single click? Because you gotta get good. No, because the game has <laughs> fucking restrictions that it was doing for no fucking reason. Okay, I totally, I totally agree that there are, there are technical limitations that, that don't hold up in a modern era. No, no, but they weren't restrictions at the time. They just did it. Total Annihilation <laughs> released a year or two before this. They didn't yeah. do that shit. I, I got, I got Urk on the TA, the TA bandwagon. Yeah, but then you got to learn. What do you mean you got me? I've been playing TA for. It's to teach no, the I mean, player I mean, how you're, to you're on the hype train. Well, I was gonna ask. Following this, so every I know the three of us have played a lot of RTSs. What is y'all's favorite RTS? Warcraft Three. Uh, I haven't played a. I don't know. I want to say I haven't played a lot, but I don't know that I got heavy into any of them. Probably one of the Command and Conquers is one of my favorites from what I've played. Yeah, I think um, my... Which one did I play a lot of? Three recently, I think is what it was. Command and Conquer 3. I did a lot of Red Alert. Not Red Alert. I did, I did a lot red of Red Alert. Alert when I was younger. Generals. or Yeah, gen Red Alert or um, Command and Conquer Generals. Yeah, yeah. I did a lot of Generals. Generals is really good. But um, for me, obviously, TA and then Warcraft 2. I did a lot more Warcraft 2 than 3. The only thing I did on mm -hmm. 3 was online. Um, I love me some Warcraft 3. I really do. Okay, yeah, absolutely love that. Also, in some news, um, actually, let me uh find some news because I accidentally just closed out oh, the fucking okay. sheet. So, oh, God. let's talk about battlegrounds. Um, so they've announced, and they, frankly, this was kind of always coming that they are going to change their patch schedule. They're going to slow some shit down. Um, they are no longer adhering to weekly or monthly patching schedules. Um. Personally, it's, I'm I'm okay with this. Like it was kind of it yeah. was always coming. Um, they can't keep up. Why would you push a weekly patch if there's you know if you don't have anything cooked enough oh. or, or well cooked enough to to release? Yeah, that was their mm -hmm. big issue. They were address saying pretty much, yeah, we would fix one thing, but we were pushing shit out so fast we were breaking two. Yeah, they they yeah. have to they have to do some internal QA and make sure that their stuff is high enough quality to to actually release. So. I'm okay with this. I know some of the gaming community is looking at this and saying, oh, look, it's another early access game that's backing off of updates. And that's, yeah. I think that's a din disingenuous a game, argument. A game doing that well is not just going to stop at this I point. Think they're one of they're the most played it. and one of the highest, you know, selling games on Steam. They're not just going to mm -hmm. say, eh, I think we're done printing money today, <laughs> right? It's actually going so well, they're they're moving to the Xbox One, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's yeah. that's the other piece of news on PUBG, is uh, even in early access, they're heading to the Xbox One. Because Xbox One is smart. They realize what's going on, and they have a, um, I can't remember the name, but they have an entire section dedicated to early access. Oh, okay. You know what PlayStation oh. doesn't have? An early access section. Yeah. So, so you're saying <laughs> Xbox One players can get just as fucked over as PC players have been for years now. Oh, I'm sorry. So you say you're fucked over by Battlegrounds? Or are you no, saying you're no. fucked over because you're a lazy consumer that clicks buy on the first thing and catches your eye without doing research? <laughs> the latter. The second okay. one. Yeah, okay. no, I do not um, yeah. regret my PUBG purchase. It is worth every no, penny no. I paid for it. That's probably the best early access game I've bought, for sure. Yeah. Definitely the most worth the money, anyway. But yeah, no, me, me being a shitty and lazy consumer and buying shit that shouldn't be bought, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so that's that's cool. Um, I'm totally okay with that. I think it's yeah. totally reasonable for them to slow down patching, do some more QA, and actually worry about quality instead of quantity patches. Yes, yes because they're, they're to the point where they're going to find three bugs, and it's okay for them to take two months. There's and only if, one more patch they have to push fast. One. Vaulting. Yeah. So, so this is actually... Um, this is kind of a, a natural progression because they do and are trying to move into the esports scene. They they do want to. And if they keep pushing patch after patch after patch and they break shit while fixing other shit, 
that doesn't make for a very good esport. That doesn't make for mm-hmm. a very good competitive game because the game is going to be different next week. And, right. you know, it could be totally unintentional. Oh, well, we fixed two bugs and we introduced seven. Anyone who has done any amount of professional programming knows that when you fix a bug, you introduce another handful yeah. of bugs unless you've got a really nice, good test and regression suite. We're talking yeah. about how that works on video games. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, it's it's they hard. Have to have something. But. Yeah, it's hard, right? There's still a lot of manual QA in the video game world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the game's good. There's not a whole lot they have to work on anyway. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a little bit of Steam news. Uh, nothing too big for the end consumer, but in general, a news article came out earlier this week stating that Steam was not going to allow people to get these bulk key orders anymore. Which, for those of you who don't understand what that means, that means companies like Green Men Gaming and that wouldn't have access to these Steam codes. Because what happens is the publisher of the game goes to Steam and says, hey, I need 10,000 keys for my game. They issue them 10,000 keys, and then they say, green man, here you go. Well, what they're starting to realize is that you have some really shitty games. And people are saying, oh, I need, I've only sold 300 games on Steam, and they're all negative. I need 10,000 keys. People are taking those 10,000 keys, botting out the trading cards, and selling them on the market. So, of course, this is a thing, first of all. <laughs> and uh, second of all, it's it's good to see Valve um, you know, taking, taking a firmer hand in gaining control of their platform. They, they don't swing the ban hammer too liberally. Um, and I, I think that has a lot of downsides to the platform. Uh, at the same time... Um, it doesn't drive people away. So if you're co- if you're a platform owner and you're constantly banning people or changing your policies or, or making it hard for people to do what they do um, to be on your platform. So Valve does ban stuff and change policies very carefully. I am totally okay with this change. It makes sense um, to the gamers. It makes sense to the community. Um, yeah, that's that's all I've got to say on this. It just makes sense. Yeah, it's it, on the surface it seemed bad, but in reality it's just Steam not letting people exploit shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, quick one. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two has a new trailer for dogfighting. Uh, the bulk of it seems cinematic, but some of those seem in game. It looks solid. So at the start it says um, in game engine footage, which that's that's good. That's good. It means that they're actually running those graphics through their in game engine. Um, yeah. With that a said, lot of camera work that certainly is not going to be what it looks like to play. <laughs> yeah, I, it, that that said, Still. I mean, like Watch Dogs did the same shit, right? That that was mm-hmm. that was the big like one that got a lot of hype and it was beautiful. And look at these graphics, and then it came out and it was dog shit because mm-hmm. they realized, hey, we can't actually make this happen on consoles. Yes, but the difference is Watch Dogs had no prior record. Yeah, I know. Battlefront yeah. does. Know. And I'm not talking yeah. the old ones. I'm talking as recent as two years ago. That has legs to stand on because while the gameplay was repetitive, the engine looked beautiful. The game played well. It was, yeah. it was pretty. Any of those Th- dice shooters, they are not um, not exactly shy on the good graphics department. I don't think that's anything to worry about. <laughs> yeah. I agree. I, I just I really wish that companies would put out um gameplay trailers more regularly being like hey mm-hmm. look like um there there are companies that do uh multiplayer test runs internally with devs but invite yeah. like IGN or GameSpot out and say hey you want to fucking like record this and do casting like Twitch style while our devs play a, a multiplayer match together that's great cuz you can see exactly what the game looks like you get um you know games journalists like GameSpot or IGN or whoever coming in and saying, oh, wow, this looks like shit. That looks like a bug. Wow, this is a really cool feature. And they're mm-hmm. not there specifically to hype up the game. They're there to get an early look at development. And I think that gives you a way better picture into a game than some cinematic. Yes, but at the same True. time, you it's, it's double-edged because look what happened to Doom. Doom's entire campaign almost got shot to hell because they had a really bad review. Yeah, they did. They they absolutely mm-hmm. did. Their their early the early stuff they showed about the game is not at all what they released. Well, because no, it, it was. It, it was the multiplayer. What they showed in the multiplayer was complete garbage. Oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. I agree. There. They didn't change the multiplayer, but even the single player, the stuff that they showed, everyone's like, "Wow, this looks slow," and I don't like glory kills. And they were trying to show off 
the beautiful parts of their engine and the beautiful parts mm-hmm. about Doom, and that's not what people play Doom for. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then Doom came out, and the single player was amazing, but we went into this with low expectations. Um, mm-hmm. The multiplayer is still a steaming pile. Yeah, it is but it comes, awful. It comes down to why is a company, unless a you know that you have an amazing game and no one knows about it, there's no reason to give all this access because it yeah. can only hurt you when you're on a pedestal like Battlefront Two is. Yeah, the probably. additional pub cannot help you. It can only hurt you. Um, yeah, yeah. I would say if you are on that kind of pedestal, people are this hyped about the game for good reasons or not. Mm-hmm. It can most only news, hurt. Most news is going to be bad news. Yeah. Hey, that's true. by the way, we can only have like two and a half players in a match. Also, you can yeah. fly one <laughs> ship. All the others two are just part players. of cinematics. Yeah. <laughs> Ten people in match. Five yeah. people have to watch. <laughs> I will say, side note, the, and this goes for like the Battlefield games too, and it's kind of Battlefield skin, a lot of people say, but the sound design is really good. Listening to that trailer, it was epic. All the sounds were just really well done. It was, um, if it sounds anywhere near that good in game, that's that, that at least will be really nice. Yes. I kinda, oh my God. Yes. I, you know, so I don't even mention sound in, a, in any Star Wars game anymore because all they have to do is they lift up the pew, D- pew. Disney hands them the John Williams playbook <laughs> and they execute <laughs> yep. it. There is literally nothing yep. else to it. It's, it's a fucking yeah. cheat book for perfect sound design. Like, okay, what would John Williams do here? Oh, this is how he would make this happen. Right. Let's do that. Yes. <laughs> It's like if you're making a Jurassic Park game and you're like, hmm, we need some like epic music that's uplifting and, and really like entrances the viewer. Oh, wait, let's just do a John Williams thing here. Done. Got it. Boom. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, one more little tidbit, and this one's actually not going to be little. Um, there was a little bit of issue with Nier when it came to the computer. Um, there was wait, PC of- games being released with bugs that were first console exclusive? Uh, there were some uh, <laughs> performance issues. So there is a really Near famous Autonoma. mod. Near Autonoma. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Autonoma. Um, Automata. There was a mod released from a popular modder who is known for just going around and fixing games. And he had hmm. a huge fix, fix for Near that helped all the performance issues. It's an amazing patch. Everyone's loving it. Well, it kind of shook some people because when you install it and it's running, it warns you and tells you like, hey, we will not run this on pirated copies. And it does a piracy check. If you have a pirated version of the cop of the game, it will not mod it for you. His reasoning is he wants to protect himself from asset injection and having DLC injected through his mod. Mm hmm. So everyone on, I, or it was a 50 50 split on Reddit and the Steam as well. Steam, the Steam post about this got so heated that it got deleted. But there was a lot of people yeah. bitching, saying, blah, blah, who gives you the right to check for piracy, blah, blah, blah. I, I do not see the controversy in this at all. Nor do I. I mean, somebody makes a mod, it's their, it's their mod, whatever, however they want to go about it. You know, even if it wasn't the liability thing, if he just said, oh, well, I'm morally against uh, pirating, so my mod isn't going to be used for pirated copies, I don't even have a problem with that. Neither do I. But it wasn't that. He said it was nothing to do with his moral stance on piracy. It was, you know, as more of a legal liability thing, which makes even more sense. So I I don't understand the controversy or why people were so up in arms about this. And this this isn't even DRM. This is literally an install check. Yeah. So it's here's a user my, agreement you accept to. When when you brought this up to me earlier, um, you thought I was going to disagree completely, and and I don't. <laughs> here's here's where I disagree. Um, mm-hmm. The legality doesn't matter at for for content injection. If somebody wanted to do DLC injection, um, that's not going to come back. Um, that, but that's that's for totally separate out, issues of legality. You sure it's not? Look yes. what happened with GTA Five. That never came back to the modder. It was actually threatened to, and that's why they started to pull. Oh, five. I thought you meant San Andreas. Never mind. I, I heard what there, I wanted There to is hear. now a precedence for this. They can okay. get back to the modder. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. There. So, so that point shot to hell. But why are you complaining about this? Someone has given you a mod for free. They have fixed the game that you bought for free, and you're yelling mm-hmm. at them because it doesn't do 
extra shit or it does something in a way that you don't like first of all the code's fucking open source it's on github go pull it mm-hmm. go take out your piracy check if you want to run this on pirated copies and go mm-hmm. fuck yourself um and he even said that in that article yeah yeah he, he said look i'm not hiding anything if you want to disable this also it's really easy to work around you just change this flag and you're done so if you want to run it on pirated copies if you're already used to pulling over cracked exes you absolutely have the technical skills to get this mod to work unless you're just fucking lazy um the second <laughs> thing is this is his mod he is giving you something for free um what fucking right do you have i get that we complain about yeah. stuff a lot on the show but yeah we? He, he we? just okay uh, I, I, we? I a, yes we, we complain a lot <laughs> i think i'm from stance that nobody is entitled to anything ever i so, i totally agree i, I totally want, get mad I want, about something like that it just bugs me i just want to hear and try to understand the point where people think a mod checking for piracy is so wrong um because it frankly it hasn't been done very much before there is historical precedence it has happened before this is not the first time but it's not the usual way of operating and i i think that's who cares the usual way of operating <laughs> has to change for progression but but for mods, you don't progress without changing the norm no, otherwise I, we're still playing 16 this is, bit no this is totally cartridges. that's a totally fucking straw man argument no it's only straw man because you don't want to accept you have to change just because it's the way it is no, doesn't mean it's the way it should be <laughs> what makes piracy what makes checks wrong no what makes piracy checks in, in installed in mods further the cause of gaming what makes it what makes it wrong why is it an issue no it's not it just doesn't have to be there so i i get i get the argument because it's not the status quo it's not normal right most mods are you plug them in and they do what they're supposed to and that's it they don't don't give a shit as long as you don't have a power to copy it does yeah and i'm I'm not Mm -hmm. saying that that people are i'm not saying that people should expect something that doesn't come from this mod. I'm not saying they're entitled to it. They're absolutely not entitled to it. And the code's open source. If they wanted to change this, they could. They're just lazy or they don't want to learn how. Um, what I'm saying is piracy checks in every single mod from now on won't further the state of video games as an art. No, but it's not going to hold it back. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it would help a little bit. I don't think it would help at all. I it, So... It could. If you're wanting uh, near and you want this game to run great and it's not running great because you have we've a pirate, all you seen, might buy it. we've all seen that piracy checks uh, in games themselves yeah. have never been cracked before, right? You're assuming that the cracking community isn't going to go after mods next, and they absolutely yeah. will. Yeah, they, you can now pull this mod. Yes, but there because are, someone's going to break it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. There are forks on GitHub today of this mod without the piracy chap. You, you can go yeah. pull this mod. Yeah. And I, I totally get why he did this. And I'm not saying he shouldn't have. I'm just saying, eh. Everyone should. I love the idea. Make it hard if you have a pirated game. If you like a game... It doesn't, n- though. It doesn't, because all I do is pull down Skyrim 100 Mod Pack from the Pirate Bay, and I have everything <laughs> no, I've no, ever no, no, wanted. But here's what yeah. you're... Here, Tom, you're... This t- isn't Tom, any Tom, harder. Tom, Tom, you are not normal. You understand how to use GitHub. You don't understand how to compile. Mods, you don't have to... Do- Tom, no, give I don't me a second. have to. I just go to the Pirate Bay and I drag a folder <laughs> that's literally off to you. I don't have to know anything technical no, no, get, except click the Pirate Bay link. Let me finish. <laughs> For mods on Steam, you go, you click, you got. That's it. That's yes. it. No, it's not. There, have you ever tried There is them? a subset of people that Yes, would there, there is. Try so, to use this and would not understand for, how to get this. For past Skyrim, that. you go to Nexus, you download a zip file and you drag over folders for a lot of the high powered mods that can't come through the workshop for one reason or another, for dependencies mm-hmm. or for file size or, or other things. There are some ways that you can't put mods on a workshop that you do get through external channels like Nexus mods. Yes. That's the thing. And people do that all the time. And some we're talking do. about, we're talking about PC gamers here, right? They're, they're not the standard console chaff. Yes, it did just disparage all console gamers. <laughs> no, but you have to understand, you were thinking at the high powered user. I know of at least three people that don't even understand how to move an EXE. That's, that's that fine. PC My game. mother doesn't play Skyrim. That's okay. No, no, no. I'm talking to people who <laughs> PC game, Tom. Yeah, and my my point is, people. if you have to go to Pirate Bay to download it, it did make it more difficult. It that, may be minuscule, yeah. but it is more difficult. Yes, but those people aren't running pirated versions of, of Nier. Yeah, also. they are. <laughs> the people who are more tender. They have to move an EXE. You just shot holes in your whole <laughs> oh, argument. That, that, they that have part. to pirate the game and move an EXE to run it. Your argument makes, makes no sense, because if they're pirating the game, they have the technical chops necessary to pirate the mods. 
It's a one-to-one -one correlation. I pirated X, I pirate Y, it's the same same thing. But you have to go through extra loops. You still have to do an extra yeah, step. Yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. they're still saving whatever. Some people might be too lazy to go through that extra step. That's that's possible, and they can play a okay. broke ass game that probably shouldn't have been released on the state it was. But the question still remains: Is why is it a bad thing for someone to release a mod that checks that? I I don't think it's a bad thing. I just don't think it helps anyone except their conscience. So that's that's fine. You can totally do that. I've installed uh, Wii Homebrew mods where it said, "Hey, don't use this for pirated games." Do you promise that? And if you hit no, <laughs> it erases itself from your SD card. Yeah, because that was my Wii. <laughs> yeah. So I I totally I totally get it. Like if yeah. it helps your conscience as the programmer to put out a mod and make sure it's not used nefarious purposes, that by all fucking means, do it. Uh, just don't be surprised when someone else counter cracks your crack. Yeah, it, of course. It it happens. Now, I don't see why everyone's so up in arms about it, but, you know, to each their own. I, I just don't think this yeah. is such a big deal, no matter which side of the fence you fall on. And, and yeah, pirates are going to pirate. You're never going to stop that. Pirates ever. are. Arr. Uh, unless, unless the only way to play a brand new game is you pay $60 and you walk into a room and they sit you down in a chair and they hand you a controller and you can only play it there. Yeah. Or or ten dollars or wh whatever. Like, and that's yeah. the only place the game exists. It's not even connected to a network. That's the only room that Skyrim, the, that yeah. the Elder Scrolls Six exi exists in, is the Be Bethesda Theater. That might stop piracy. It might until <laughs> maybe, you get that theater not. guy that that fucking uploads it to the pirate bay. It might. Uh. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, way. I'm going to cut Tom off there for reasons, but. <laughs> Um, letting everyone know, well, like I said earlier, tonight we're doing Left 4 Dead 2. Uh, I'll be start starting just a few minutes after we cut the cast, uh, so please jump in our Discord. It's linked below. Later um, this week, we will stream live from the be Bethesda good. Theater. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that's all we have for you guys this week. If you would like to um, follow us on Twitter, it's um, at 72 PC Podcast. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, you can come catch us live every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitter at dot TV slash 72 pin connector. Um, if you are watching us live, we have more and more content going up to our YouTube channel at 72 pin connector on YouTube, including all the series we are currently running are being edited and thrown up. Um, and with that, I think that is all we got for you this week. So until next week, game on. See you, everyone. See ya. Fuck you, dick! <laughs> <laughs>